Hey, what is going on you guys? This is Tim O'Dell with Odell Complete Landscape. This is the final part of the series of this whole front yard remodel. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's just jump right into it. All right, a little update on the job. What we have gotten done today and what we plan on doing today. So we have grazed the whole middle section. We have put our planter bed forms in. We have grazed the back side of the planter bed way back there. We're still grading the middle tiny section and all these small sections are going to be artificial turf in the front. We haven't got to the front uh, city area yet, but we plan on doing that real soon. What I'm hoping to get done is to get all these main areas graded and put weed fabric in today and maybe not this part. Still seeing how far we can get in the day, but let me take a closer look. So here is the section that we have got done grading. This is already done, graded, ready for some uh, base and sand for artificial turf. We got the pressure treated 4x4 in for the planter bed up here. Looking nice. There's our little irrigation stub up for all the plants that will be going in this section right here. Here is the next planter bed. This is pretty much graded out. We're just bringing in a little bit more dirt. Irrigation as well, right there, sub up. And the last section we're trying to get done. And you can see the form, the 4x4 is in. If you guys are wondering what we're going to do about that little sewer clean out right there, we plan on putting a big hollow rock over there. Cover that sucker up. Over here, we're going to be doing artificial turf. Still needs to be graded. It's a mess. It's a mess. And then DG right here. So, I'm gonna get back to it. All right, so when I did start to grade out this area right between the RV driveway and the six foot walking path to the front door, what I wanted to do and accomplish was I wanted a small little bump in the middle for the artificial turf to make it look more like natural grass. So I'm gonna kind of make it like a little swell in the middle of the artificial turf yard area. Just so it has some nice contouring effect. And I did that by using streamlines. And it's gonna be so gradual, you'll barely be able to notice it, but it's just gonna give that front yard that more of a contrast and it'll make it that much more nice looking in my opinion some people like flat but you know personally I like the little bit of contrast and contouring so we set string lines up followed it from the uh, city sidewalk up to the crown point and then to the um, planter bed form that we put in at the very top and then I just raised and then I actually put string lines on the side of the RV driveway and the six foot walkway string lines to the middle and I raised them slightly in the middle probably like maybe an inch or two inches up and that's how I graded out this whole area Once everything was graded to perfection, we started laying in our weed fabric at the very bottom before we bring in our base. 
because we want to make sure no weeds grow up on the edges of our artificial turf, which usually seems to happen if you don't bring in your weed fabric. So very important to bring in weed fabric. And we put weed fabric every, everywhere where we were gonna be installing our artificial turf. And the base that we use is a 1 8 crushed concrete aggregate. It's really nice because this stuff gets really thick and hard. And what's great about that is it's 1 8 minus rock. So once you start to lay down your artificial turf, the surface is really nice and flat and you won't have any of those uh, protruding rocks that you would get like in a three quarter inch um, aggregate base. So that's why I always try to stick to the 1 8 minus. But what I actually did for this one was um, to save a little money is I put three quarter inch rock at the bottom and then I used like inch and a half to two inches of the 1 8 minus uh, concrete aggregate on the top. Because the 1 8 minus aggregate base is actually a little more pricey but it's definitely worth it. As you can see right there that we're bringing in. That's the 1 8 minus and I put the 3 quarter inch rock at the bottom. Alright what is going on everybody? It is a turf laying day. You can see all the turf rolls we have. We got a lot. I got Edgar here, my main man. He's just the best turf layer in OC. He's just spraying down uh, the base right now. Made everything's really nice, compact, ready to lay lay all the turf in. Should be a long day, but it will be a fun one because after this, the front yard is gonna be looking beautiful. So I'm gonna help these guys unload, and uh, yeah, we'll get started. So before we do start laying any artificial turf, we are just fine tuning the 1 8 crushed aggregate that we brought in. We got grain ranks out and we just need to compact it now and then wet it. And that will really consolidate and really compact and um, bring it all together. Plus it's also nice to lay your turf out in the sun, let it stretch out while we compact and get everything else ready. Bro, when we started going up the hill, I felt like all the weight just crushed me. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, I, um, uh, I had to like go for like a half a second coming <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that's why. Yeah, did you feel like I'm like, like, go for a couple Yeah, like for a second, I, we were going up. I was like, oh shit, it got heavy. <laughs> bueno. Okay, so how we're going to be unrolling this turf was well, this turf was really heavy. It was a big piece. It was, I think it was like 15 by 45 or 15 by 30, something like that. So it wasn't like carrying it up this hill. And then also, when we do want to lay it out, we want probably like an eighth inch overhang on that uh, planter bed form. And then the excess is going to be overhanging on both the RV side and actually, yeah, yeah both sides because it, it was a wider piece than um, the width of the planter bed area, which is always good because you'd rather have more than less. And what's is nice about this area is we were able to do this with one big piece, not a single seam. So you know this is gonna look amazing in the front yard. You can already tell how good it's looking with us just unrolling it. But wait till you know all the pieces are cut and staple or uh, nailed in and placed. Plus when we uh, broom all the turf uh, bristle blades up, it's gonna look that much better. So just like any of our other artificial turf jobs, the first thing we want to do on the artificial turf is we want to stretch it out into place and then put a couple nails in those places to hold it in that spot as we keep going down the artificial turf and stretching it out. And then we'll nail it from one end as um, we move down. Now the key to nailing your six inch galvanized nails is using one nail to pull back the rest of the artificial turf blades oh, yeah. and then nice and tight, 
hammering it down with your hammer. Pretty plain and simple. The whole point of that is to not catch any of the blades as you're putting your nails in. If you were to catch any of the artificial turf blades in as you were pounding those nails in, at the end of the job, your artificial turf would look like a Dalmatian. Spots everywhere. That's definitely not something you want. So take your time on putting your nails in. As you can see, we are doing right here. And then once the nails are all the way at the bottom, we like to just um, move the blades around, try to feel it out, see if we have any blades caught by the nail head. But that's how we do every single one. We usually have one guy dedicated to putting the nails in, sometimes two, um, depending on how big the area really is. But you can see all the nails that we have in this artificial turf already. Also, um, you don't need a whole lot in the middle of your artificial turf, but the parts where you really need it is on the perimeter and edges because that's where your artificial turf could easily um, get flipped up or um, come, come off. So here's uh, the money shots. This is the skilled, really skilled part of artificial turf. Clean cuts. You do not want to be messing these cuts up because if you were to mess your cuts up, you don't have more turf to replace it. I mean, yes, you could put a seam in, but it would just ruin this whole section of the front yard because this is a seamless piece right here. You don't want to do something dumb by messing your cuts up and having to end up putting a seam at the edge because that would be noticeable. So take your time on those edge cuts. You only want probably like an eighth inch overhang on your edges because that eighth inch overhang will be tucked in between the crevice of your bordering edge and you'll see what I mean by that once we get to that point but you can see we have all of our artificial turf laid out where they will be going and this is what I'm talking about when I say tucking the edges in we use a little uh, crowbar cat's paw um, with a little hammer to hammer the edge in between the crevice of each other. And if you do get some bubbling on the edge of your artificial turf once you're doing this, it's most likely because your base might have moved and you just need to pat it down with your um, foot, hammer, anything like that, anything heavy, and it should put the ba the base back into place. So when you are putting nails in on the edges, I would say you want to put them about six to eight inches apart, and then every third put one right behind them in between or so and also it kind of depends on where you're putting artificial turf because different climates might affect the artificial turf in different ways due to expansion and contraction so just be um, aware of these type of your environment that you're putting your artificial turf in So here's an example of us putting all of the nails in on the edges. You can see how he puts one nail behind every three or so that he places in. And those nails are probably about six to eight inches apart. So once everything is nailed in, all the edges are tucked, the next and Almost the next final step to completing your artificial turf is laying in your industrial sand. And you can get this at any supply yard that sells artificial turf or even Home Depot sells it. But typically, how much you put 
in your artificial turf depends on the ounces um, on your artificial turf but the general rule of thumb is about one pound per foot so that's the general practice and idea of how much artificial turf sand or industrial sand you should be placing in and what this sand really does for you is once you actually before you even lay any industrial sand in you need to do a um, sweep over all the artificial turf grass because you need to bring up all the blades sticking straight up so that the sand will fall to the bottom and lock in the blades to keep them standing straight up so that's one little thing I forgot to show you guys before we started laying in this industrial sand so always um, broom your blades up before putting the sand in and then you want to broom them one more time because um, you don't want the sand just laying on top of your blades and holding them down the whole point of the sand is nice. to keep the blades standing up now that tool over there the guy in the white um, sweater or long sleeve is holding is the uh, power sweeper and the power sweeper power sweeps all of the blades to make them stand straight up so this is what I was talking about before you lay in your industrial sand make sure to power sweep the blades up without the sand being in there this is after we already placed all the sand you want to do another power sweep at the final to make sure that any um, excess sand that's a little too much in too many areas it gets spread out and um, spread equally across the artificial turf and then we also have a blower blowing any uh, loose sand out of the area and any loose artificial turf blades that might have um, got taken out while we were installing the artificial turf <laughs> So I did want to come back about a month or two months later to show you guys the final product when all of the plants were growing in nicely, the concrete was cured out completely, and just get a quick look a month or two months later after we came back on this project. So <clears throat> everything was looking really nice as you can tell. Everything is looking picture perfect to design. The concrete on the RV area is nicely cured out. Um, you can also see that the neighbor also did a little bit of landscaping on their side now just to uh, match their neighbors a little more to make everything uh, blend more harmoniously. From this angle right here, you can really get a good look on how the whole front yard came together and is looking. 
the homeowners are really stoked and excited to start parking their RV on that RV driveway area. The turf came out amazing. The redwood looks picture perfect framing around the concrete. Let me know what you guys think about the whole project and how it turned out. I think it looks amazing to me, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. The homeowners are loving their uh, driveway addition, making a lot of good use out of it. We got the rock covering that super clean out, and you can tell that the plants have really started to blossom and bloom since it is now spring, so they're starting to really grow in. But that is the project and how this whole series turned out. Make sure if you guys enjoyed everything, hit the like button. Don't, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so once I do post new videos, you'll be notified. And I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Stay tuned for more videos, and have a great day.